Hey guys, what's up? Uh, so today was the big day that AMD uh, released their new Ryzen 7 series processor. Uh, it was pretty exciting. Uh, this processor has been, uh, boy, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And I'd say that the hype train on this one was pretty out of control. Um, and the delivery was very interesting because I think AMD managed to uh, really impress and disappoint at the same time. So it's very mixed. And, and basically what I'm talking about there is uh, the benchmarks are showing that, it, that the Ryzen processor does exceedingly well. Uh, in fact, it's better than, uh, than most of the Intel processors at multi-core tasks. Um, productivity, creativity, scientific, and, and some of these synthetic benchmarks but uh, that it's not holding up so well uh, in gaming benchmarks. So I wanted to take a minute uh, to kind of look into that, right? I was, I was pretty curious as to what the CPU utilization was like and how the IPC was doing. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd pull up Status Core and take a look. What this is, uh, over on your left, this program uh, is something you can download from my website at danotech.com. And what it does is it reads performance counter registers off of the chip and gives us the information. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the speed, the IPC, and the MIPS. Uh, the MIPS, of course, being the millions of instructions per second. So uh, so as you can see right now, uh, because we're in the uh, main menu of the, of the game, uh, not a lot is going on, so the CPUs are pretty idle, and the operating system is controlling that, and it's, it's basically shutting down the cores uh, so that it uses less power. Uh, but what we would expect is when we launch the benchmark that the cores will activate and start doing stuff and then we can we can measure what they're doing. So let's go ahead and get that started now. Um, and, I, and I did uh, remember to reduce the resolution scale of my benchmarks so that uh, so that this is a CPU limited test. All right, so, so here you can see it's running, and really what you should be looking at is the speed, the IPC, and the MIPS. Um, over in the speed column, you can see you can see that it's not really utilizing the cores that well. Um, even though it is using them to some degree, it's not doing a whole lot of work. So where they should be running at 2.8 gigahertz, uh, it looks like the average is more like 1,500, 1,600 uh, megahertz. So that's not really great. Uh, and we look over at the IPC column and we can see that it's doing, uh, on average, just a little bit above one instruction per clock cycle. But what's interesting is how that changes over time, just kind of depending on what scene you're in. Um, what we're actually seeing a lot of times is less than one instruction per clock cycle. And that's also really disappointing. Look, look at that right there. Uh, you're looking at like a 0.8 average. Um, so going into this third and final scene here in the benchmark, you can see that the MIPS uh, is hovering right around 2,000. Uh, so that means about 2 billion instructions per second per core. Um, there's eight cores, so it looks like you're looking at close to, I'd say, between 14 and 16 billion instructions per second, which again is not great. The CPUs here, uh, these are some Xeons. They are capable of a heck of a lot more than that. So the benchmark is done, and what I would say, based on what we just saw, is that um, uh, the game is not doing a good uh, character. Is it, it doesn't give us a good analysis or a good representation of of what the CPU can actually do, right? It's not. This is not a good measure of a CPU's muscle. This is a good measure of a GPU's muscle, quite honestly. Um, and I think one of the reasons why it's uh, so much slower than its peers, you know, why the Ryzen processor is going so much slower than the other processors in, in these benchmarks has more to do with the power optimizations than the clock speed or the IPC. Um, and let me explain that a little bit. And, and this is just a hypothesis. I'd, I'd, I'd be glad if somebody came, came along and proved me wrong. Um, uh, but this, So this is just a hypothesis. But uh, basically what, what it means is that because the CPU utilization is fairly low, uh, it gives the operating system um, power management an opportunity to park the cores or to slow uh, to slow the cores down and put them to sleep. Um, I'm not a real expert on how the C states work, uh, but essentially there's different power uh, saving levels or sleep states that the CPU goes into. 
And when the CPU has no work to do because there is no thread on that CPU, uh, it shuts it off. And I believe that there is latency involved with shutting it down and bringing it back up. So that CPU stays in a sleep state uh, for a few microseconds or even a few milliseconds until an interrupt comes along and wakes up that core. And then the, and at that point, the scheduler would bring a thread, you know, one of the active threads in onto that core and then start running. And then even when it's running, it's not at full speed yet. It needs to run for a few microseconds before the turbo boost kicks in and brings it up to full speed. And so I think, I think that that's the reason why, why Ryzen is not doing as well at, as the Intel processors in, in these benchmarks. Um, possible that uh, a workaround here would be to disable the power saving entirely so that the cores never park. And I think uh, AMD alluded to that without saying as much uh, when, uh, if you remember at the last minute before, you know, at the 11th hour before the reviews came out, they were emailing the journalists to, to let them know uh, that one of the, uh, one, of the uh, one of the websites uh, showed a chart uh, with um, that changes the the profile of how Windows um, of how Windows controls the uh, the P states. So uh, yeah, so I mean that's that's basically it. I think uh, it's impossible to really draw any conclusions about a CPU's performance uh, based on a gaming benchmark. In fact, uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to I'm going to kind of stick my neck out here and say that that's actually a pretty irresponsible thing to do. Um, that uh, and 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 I'll give you an example of what I mean and why and why I really mean that. Um, is uh, well, let let me just show you a chart. Uh, there was uh, this is one of the charts that showed up in the Guru 3D uh, benchmarks. Uh, this is Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, the same game that we're running here in the background on various processors. And as you can see, for the most part, they're running at about 130, maybe 140 frames per second. But the AMD processors are actually running quite a bit slower. Uh, Zen here is running at 114 frames per second, and Excavator, which is the uh, the Athlon uh, X4845, that's running at 90 frames per second. And so, if you were to, uh, if you if you just take this uh, chart at face value, you would say to yourself, you know, it, it, that um, hey, look, Zen Zen's only 20% faster than the Excavator core, you know, 20-25% faster. Uh, that's not impressive at all. But that's actually not true uh, whatsoever. The Zen core is uh, much, much faster than the, than the 845. In fact, um, if you remember the Blender uh, demonstration that AMD did in December at their New Horizon event where they rendered the Ryzen logo in Blender, uh, they had a 3.4 gigahertz Zen processor uh, completed that image in 35.1 seconds. Hard OCP today in their uh, list of benchmarks, they had an overclocked Zen processor do it in about 30 seconds. This excavator uh, processor that you see here, I have one, uh, the 845, and I replicated that Blender benchmark because I was curious as to how slow it was. Um, it did the benchmark in four minutes. Okay, guys, I, I want you to think about that for a second. The, the, the Zen uh, CPU, the, the, the 1800X is eight times faster than the Athlon X4845. But if you looked at this benchmark uh, here, you might not realize that. You're, you're thinking that the Zen is only 20% faster. No, it's 800% faster. So, so that's why I, I think that using video games uh, as a means of uh, comparing processors and, and, and analyzing its capabilities is actually pretty irresponsible. It doesn't really do it very much. What it does do, of course, is if, if you're a gamer uh, and you, you do, you want to know what the best processor is for your game, you absolutely are going to scan the reviews and look for uh, the highest frame rate and what CPU that is. And in a lot of cases, the, the best CPU for gaming is actually a Core i5 because it doesn't have hyper-threading where the, the other threads don't interfere with the main uh, game threads to slow it down. Um, but that is, it's not indicative of, at all of the CPU's real performance potential. So. Um, with that being said, I think it's important, I hope you guys, uh, when you look at the, the Ryzen reviews and the benchmarks, that you'll keep that in mind. Uh, even though it's disappointing to see that um, 
the, the, the Ryzen processor isn't doing so great uh, in gaming, the fact is, is that the potential is there. This, it's a great CPU. Uh, oftentimes, the IPC is higher than, uh, than the Broadwell E. It's just a little bit behind the Skylake. Uh, the clock speeds are right there in the middle. Uh, this is a very competitive CPU, but the price is, is wonderful. The price is tremendously wonderful. Uh, and I would um, encourage anybody who's serious about looking at upgrading their CPU, especially if you have a quad core, you probably are going to be interested in an eight core Ryzen CPU. I think it's a great value. So anyway, um, when you get a minute, if you want to check it out, go to my website, danotech.com, download the program, uh, and look at, and you know, just kind of run some of your programs through it. See what you think. Uh, you can get a really good idea of how much CPU utilization uh, is actually occurring uh, during some of these benchmarks. I think it's insightful information, uh, and I hope that you do too. Anyways, thanks for watching. Goodbye.